study. Good morning, everybody. This is Bill Dubois, and uh, this morning we're going to be doing our Wednesday study of Proverbs chapter 10, and it's going to be a very, very, very interesting study uh, because, as we say before, uh, Proverbs is a very no, no, no lie, no, no nothing. It's just bam, 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 bam. It takes you everywhere you need to go. Uh, so uh, Wednesday is going to be the 13th, I believe. 13th of uh, November is going to be, uh, right? 10th. 10th? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be the 10th of... Uh, but they, they can watch it on the 13th, it's Saturday. Yeah, you can watch it anytime you want, because it'll be out there on the 10th. Anyway, you folks have a great time. Uh, we're going to be uh, going into Proverbs here in a few, a few minutes, and uh, at the end of Proverbs, uh, then uh, I'll see you on the back side. God bless the United States. God bless our troops and our first responders. And God bless Sam Hall for his teachings of this Bible study. We'll see you later. Bye. You're wrong. Proverbs of Solomon. Proverbs chapter 10, ladies and gentlemen. And I use that term sparingly. Uh, we're continuing on in our study of Proverbs. And I've learned quite a bit of uh, how important it is to glean wisdom, the wisdom of God, because... What we've studied in the last couple of chapters, uh, especially eight, was Jesus himself talking. Mm -hmm. So hello out there, folks in video land. Sit down, shut up, pull your scuffies up close, pull that robe up tight, drink that extra cup of coffee, and listen to what the Word of God says. And sit close to the fireplace. Oh, Snug the fireplace. Snuggle with your binkies. You know what? It's just uh, some of these evenings are getting fireplace time. I know it. It was 41 this morning at our house. It's so. be silly out there. Of course, we live in Alaska, and we drive here every time. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry, Alaska can be, they sound so, so much like, so much like actually country, yes. Alrighty, the Proverbs of Solomon, a wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Now notice the difference, stark difference. Bill and I have been talking about this a whole lot in the book of Solomon, how we can see in one verse and then the next verse, or even in the same verse, like that one there, has two totally different types of people. Did you notice that? Yeah. Uh, on, my, on my notes, I said one of these one of these parents here has a little bit of bragging rights. That's my boy over there. Look how well he's acting. I taught him. God had taught me. My dad had taught me. It's instilled in him. He loves the Word of God. He is a child of God. He, he loves the Word of God. He... he uh, peers into it and lets that lead his life. That's my boy out there. He's in the world. He's doing good out there and the Lord has his hand on him and he knows it. The other one over here, not so much. Oh, that's also, that's your child? Yeah, I think so. I think that was one of ours. That, that's, okay, have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that about people? Okay, this is what that's saying. A wise son. What have we learned up to now about what wisdom is? is the ability to use the knowledge of the world and of God's word and of your work and of your life and of who you are properly. A wise choice. This is what that is. People need to make wise choices. But a foolish son is the heaviness um, his of, the mother, mother. of his mother. Yeah, it just, there's just two different folks there. Two says treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness delivereth from death. Y'all know any rich people? Really, really rich people, but they're not godly people? Mm -hmm. I do. I know some really, really, really rich people have a lot of money, have a lot of stuff. Yet, even in that earthly wealth, it's not, they're not happy. Uh, there's always that sense of somebody may be trying to get my money. Mm -hmm. Somebody may be trying to rob me. What are you doing? Uh, I think you're only nice to me because you want something from me. And then when they die, how much do they leave? All of it. All of it. Uh, most of the wealthy people I know are very lonely mm -hmm. because they don't they don't know who their real friends are. Right. And it's not that it's not the bank account. Right. It's, it's certainly not the bank account. Uh, uh, worldly riches and treasures, folks. This is right out of the Bible. Is it okay to have a lot of money? Yes, it is. It's fine. Just don't put your trust in that money. Just don't lean on that money 
for all of your joy in life because that money can't buy you joy in life. We just said, how much you leave? You know how much Howard Hughes left? All of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now the last thing he said, I wish I had it one more dollar. Just one more dollar. I just, I just need one more dollar. Yep. One more dollar. I wish I could sell some more nuts and bolts. Yeah. That's what uh, and somebody make sure you, you stain my spruce Sorry. goose for me. But righteousness delivereth from death. Now notice that, folks. That's some stout word right there in verse 2. Righteousness delivereth from death. What death is this talking about? Uh, oh, if, if you're a righteous person, you're not going to die. That's not what that says. Righteousness in this life. If you have a lifestyle of righteousness, if you live a godly life, even up to the point of death, you know that you're going to be with your Heavenly Father. You know that you're going to be okay eternally. The second death, you're not going to have part of that second death, which is condemnation forever and ever. That's what that's talking about. See? Isn't that pretty good? Uh, Bill, read 3, 4, and 5 if you would. The Lord will not let it let the godly go hungry, but he refuses to satisfy the craving of the wicked. Lazy people are soon poor, hard workers get rich. Wise youth harvest in the summer, but one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Connie, turn over the back a few pages to Psalm 37. What book? Psalm 37. And verse 25, and see what that says. The Lord will not nine, suffer nine, nine. the soul of the righteousness to famish. Now, uh, let's, let's take a, a good story from way back over in the Old Testament here, further back. Remember an old boy named Joseph, who was one of many, mm -hmm. uh, one of many, uh, son, uh, mm -hmm. a son of one of many, you know, Jacob and Israel. Anyway, when he was, uh, let's say, um, excommunicated from his family, he ended up in Egypt, remember that? But remember what happened to Joseph in Egypt? There was a drought. But what did Potiphar, Potiphar saw a, the Spirit of God in him, what happened? There was a drought in what he had done. The, mm -hmm. the previous harvest was set a lot of grain back, and so they made it through the harvest, even in the surrounding areas. They would come down to Egypt to get that. Mm -hmm. What does uh, uh, Psalm 37.5 say? It says... Okay, that makes more sense. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That would be that King David talking, mm -hmm. the, the father, the earthly daddy of this man here, Solomon. And remember, Solomon was not the warrior type uh, physique that David was. David, of course, was short and ruddy, kind of red-headed anyway. But he was a warrior. He was a great warrior. Solomon tended to be uh, more at the house with Bathsheba a lot. But this is the same line here. So David said, I was young, I, I'm, I was young at one time, now I've grown older, and in all of that, I've yet to see anybody that puts God first now, that has God, the God of heaven, as their God, that he's the ruler of their life. I've never seen them begging for bread. I've never seen them go hungry at night. I've never seen them go, uh, lay down and go, I'm just, uh, nobody's taking care of me. God takes care of his own. That's what this says. It works. It's true. Mm -hmm. okay? And Solomon's saying that to us. Um, Bill, what you said you said an interesting word. He, he takes away. What, read that. Read that three. Get the end of three. What does it say? Uh, let me see. He, in this, he says, but he refuses to satisfy the craving of the wicked. See, notice that there's a craving. See that word in there? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the wicked have a craving. We read about it earlier. Their craving is to do something evil every day because they can't sleep at night unless they've done their daily dose of evil. But God himself says, I'm not going to satisfy that. You're, going, you're pacified on this earth in your unrighteousness. You're never satisfied because I'm not in your life. Mm -hmm. Notice that. I'm, I'm not going to satisfy your craving to do what? Evil. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be satisfied. You're always going to want more and more. We see that in today's society. Look at Washington, D.C. They're not satisfied with anything. They want more evil. Look at some of these bills they're trying to pass. It's evil. Okay? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the woke folk, the leftist, the uh, hard-nosed Democrats, the liberals of this country, contrary to what the Bible says about liberal, being liberal and giving and your love and your care, the liberals of this country are never satisfied. They always want something more, and it never satisfies. And what they're wanting is to completely do away with this word, and anyone that trusts in this word, that's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. They want to do away with it. 
And is uh, are we going to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving? Should we all still be here on the 25th? Absolutely. That's our indigenous day here in the United States, what God has done for this country. Mm -hmm. And fully on anyone that doesn't appreciate the day of Thanksgiving. Oh, it's just people stirring up the pot. Absolutely. Well, I've got something I want to stir them with. Oh, boy. It's the Word of God. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you went nice there. I was thinking of something else. <laughs> Ultimately, yes, it's the Word of God. So uh, at the end four there, I wrote, get a job. Do something productive. If you want something, if you want something in this life, get a job. Do something. Pick up aluminum cans on the side of the road. There's plenty of them out there. And when they're 70 cents a pound, that's a lot of money. Yeah, and yeah. don't just keep waiting for the check to come in to your mailbox. Absolutely. Go, go do something with your life. Uh, five there, like you said, he that gathereth in the summer is a wise son. What, what does that mean? You're, you're not only thinking about gluttonous today. What can I do right now this moment? But you're thinking about, there's, there's another day coming. Tomorrow's coming. Next week's coming. The, the harsh winter is coming. I need to be setting something aside. Barns, that's what barns were uh, talked about in the, in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus talked about in the New Testament about the unwise people. I'll tear down my barns because they're not big enough to hold everything I've got. Tonight, your soul's going to be required of you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're not including God in your plans. That's the thing about it. Notice the end of five there. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. We're going to say it again. Faith and laziness do not mix. Faith and laziness do not mix. Blessings are up on the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. How about that? Violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. It seems like there are people with wicked mouths today, that they're violent people, that they all they do is spew out insults and blasphemous words and uh, uh, degrading things toward humankind, but especially it's about God and His Word. That's what this boils down to, folks. That's what it is. I, I like the slap in the face part on verse 6 where it said, The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Evildoers lurk around and try to hide what they do, but the just and the open are blessed, and the lawless uh, have violent ways. Sure enough, absolutely. The godly folks, the Lord showers and shares His blessings with. Folks, you can't get a, you can't get a, 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 you can't get past either part of these proverbs. Like Bill's been saying, they just they're just little bullet statements that slap you in the face. And, and if we live according to this word. Uh, I just want to be slapped all over with some goodness and some blessings and some kindness. Well, I think the first part of these proverb verses are the pat on the back. Mm -hmm. And then boom. And then boom. <laughs> is what you, then that's the slap. The that, that's, that's usually the pattern. Yeah, sure mm -hmm. enough. Or there, there's a, there's a, ah, oh, and then a semicolon or a colon and then but. Oh, oh <laughs> absolutely. Ah, oh, oh that, that's, if you'll notice that, that's, the way, that's a good way to look at it. Yep. What's the first part of that? Oh, yes, I like that. Oh, that last part's kind of rough. Uh, Connie reads seven, um, seven and eight. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Mm -hmm. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fall. <laughs> Have you ever seen that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re read, your, read your eight, Bill. I like that one. Okay. My eight says, The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. Absolutely. Have you ever seen that before? <laughs> people, people that won't talk, uh, uh, that, that don't talk very much, that think about what they uh, should say or shouldn't say, you're like, what they do say, that little that little gem of what they just said is so rich, it's so wise. But people that just go on and on and on, and you're thinking, oh, I'm just about to pull my, the rest of my hair out because what they're saying is grating, G-R-A-T-I-N-G, grating, like a chalkboard, and they're just babbling, they're just going on, okay? Yeah, and you know, here's an example, kind of current. Joe Biden would make fun of the way Donald Trump would walk especially when he was walking onto a plane. What happened to him? He's walking up into the plane. He falls how many times? Three. 
He needs to watch what he says. Yeah, absolutely. Sure enough. Well, though, there's an old saying that, that he's speaking with pocket tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Like, like a serpent's tongue. Mm -hmm. This he is has what he says. Way. This is what he means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. $450,000, that's just garbage. Watch all talking about his garbage. Yeah, that I didn't say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've got the videotape. Yep. <laughs> it's good. Hey, hey, at least we're consoled to know that there are some really, really, a group of really, really unrighteous people that do know what's going on, and they're the ones telling Jojo what to say. Now, I, I find solace in that. that. You know, he might not know what's going on, but uh, I, I just, just think that the, what 7 says, the memory of the just is blessed. Now, there, there again, there's that semicolon. But the name of the wicked shall rot. Have you ever noticed that in history? Me meaning people remember the just. Absolutely, and, and the name goes on. Oh. And when you think about them, when you recollect, you can sit there and go, wow, what that person did, how, how they helped build up society, what they did for their community, what they did across the world. Uh, but then you think of, uh, then you try to think of somebody that was really mean and nasty or whatever else, and you, it's just like fleeting. It's just like, uh, where, where were they? Who were they? You know, mm -hmm. Or you don't even recognize the name. That's what it says. Mm-mm-mm. Folks, it makes a difference. Every day what we do with our lives makes a difference as, far, uh, as, as what goes on afterwards. Babbling fools, always talking. Uh, notice how that says that shall be beaten and told to shut up, but wise folks are willing to receive instructions and learn. So you, that means that uh, you've got to be ready for someone to point out when you're not doing what you're supposed to do or there's a better way to do it and that's not an easy thing to do but you need to be saying okay I know that no matter how hard I try I might need instruction mm -hmm. and it may be painful people that realize they need instructions you can teach me that mm -hmm. people that, that are willing to learn that are, are willing to humble themselves and go I don't know how to do this. I'd like to know how to do this, but I don't know how to do this. If you know how to do it, can you tell me? Mm -hmm. That person, you can teach them anything. Yeah. Because they have a willing spirit. Like Bill says, they, they, want, they have to want to. Mm -hmm. But a, uh, we've all been around people that just know everything. I know everything about everything. Mm -hmm. you, well, the you guy that, well, the guy that says, well, you, you said, well, I climbed a 10-foot ladder. That's nothing. I climbed a 20-foot ladder with no steps. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just skimmed right up. No yeah. runs, but I oh, got that, it. That little, that little word there when you say, that's nothing. Yeah, you know, like, I've done this, that, and that, and someone says, oh, that's nothing. Oh, I just want to wring their neck. <laughs> you know, oh, that's nothing. <laughs> There's always somebody that's going to do anything that <laughs> you've done better. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, this, the Bible calls them a prating fool. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine that. A prat, not just a fool, but a prating fool. Well, it's just patting themselves on the back. People that just walk around with a uh, that uh, that male peacock syndrome, you know. Look at all my feathers and colors, you know. You just want to go. Oh, uh, nine says, "He that walketh uprightly, walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known." Uh, we know some people. This is blatant. You know people by the way that, and not just walking, not Neanderthal like. No, uh, dragging your knuckles, you know, with a flat, fuzzy forehead. This isn't what it's talking about necessarily, although well, there are some people like that. This is talking about people that walk with integrity, that live their daily lives are, are full of integrity, they're full of truth. No matter where you see them, that's who they are, okay? If they're by themselves, that's the way they act. If they're in front of a group of people, that's the way they act. There's your character and your integrity. Other people, you know, just like we were talking about, the, the, uh, the, the old saying is, if you tell the truth, you don't have to have a good memory. But when you start lying to people, it just snowballs usually. It gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, this is what happens. People stumble. No, notice it says there all this is very personal. And I, it says there, but he that perverteth his ways. Who did it? Not society. Not you only had one parent. Not you grew up in a poor district. Not you, what color you are. But you perverted your own ways. This is what this says. This is a very personal, uh, these Proverbs are. But he that perverteth his own ways shall be known. Now, can we relate these stories here to what just happened in Daniel chapter 5 and previous with Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar and now Darius? Can we, can we see that something happens with these leaders? Who's the first people they call? They're, they're soothsayers, they're magicians, they're, so, they're astrologers well, that don't know anything. 
These people are the ones that are pranting fools around, going, well, I'm wearing a robe in the king's court, and I know this, that, and other, but they don't know nothing. What's the last person they call? Daniel, way back in the back. Okay. This is what this is talking about. Anyone willing to learn really what's going on? Call the righteous guy. Mm -hmm. If you're still First. alive, yeah. after all the other stuff that you tried. Yep, sure enough, this is what this is talking about. It's so applicable to today's living, folks. We need truth. We need righteousness in our lives. We need... If God sends someone as a help person in your life as that person to to glean from from the Bible, especially from experience, there's no there's no duplicating experience. You have to, experience is just number one. Hey, I've been there. I've done that. This is what has happened. This is why Solomon. This is why. If you notice, what was the first verse there? What was the very first verse? The proverb of Solomon. Had he been there and done that? Yeah. He had been there and done that. He had been given that big tray like I talked about. Everything was on it. And this is Sammy's version. And what did he choose? He chose wisdom. Mm -hmm. Did he stray from it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got off track. The thing is, he knew to do right. Absolutely. 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 Well, when, when you get wisdom, then you have the knowledge to get everything else. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you know how to use that right correctly. Absolutely. Now then, here's, the, uh, here's an answer to one of the questions of why. Why does he talk about the bad women? Who, who's writing this? Solomon. Who did, what did Solomon blatantly allow in his own life? Women from other countries, women from other areas to come in. What did they do? Did they build him up and say, you continue to serve that Yahweh of God and we'll be your helpmates? No. What did they do? Pulled him away. They're the women sitting in the corners, blatantly going, hey, come on over, winky, winky, have some of me. And he's going, let's go to the school of wisdom and to the school of red light district. Who wrote, remember who wrote this? Solomon. Mm -hmm. He had been there. Mm -hmm. He had been there and done that, okay? Done that a lot of times. Amen. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Winky, uh, uh, Bill read 10 and 11. 10. People who wink at wrong cause trouble, but a bold reproof promotes peace. I mean, it's, 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 it's blatant, so bam, bam. You know, it's, I mean. <laughs> uh, Connie turned to James, the book of James, uh, chapter 5 and verse 20. Okay. And we should we should ask this question as we're going through this proverb study: How do real believers treat each other, or how should we at least? Yeah. How should we treat each other? Golly, that's the last verse of yeah. the whole book. Well, what is Jane? Let me let me read eleven and twelve here. Uh, the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. So what does James 5 put in the New Testament? Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. Now is it not a good thing that Solomon is writing this? James, the brother of Jesus, knows what he has written because who gave Solomon his wisdom to begin with? God. God did. Jesus incarnate in, in the flesh. Can you imagine growing up with as James and your older brother is Jesus and he's the one that spoke the words to Solomon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine that, okay? Mm -hmm. Now then what does he end his, his text with there? Scare the hell out of him. Mm -hmm. in, in, infiltrate the evil with such good and tell them you have one foot in Sheol right now and the other's on a banana peel. Here's, here's the way to get out of that. Trust in the Lord. This is what this is saying, okay? Let me read it again. Look at 11 and 12. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. We know people that are just outright mean, and we mentioned it last week about ignorant people, ignorant of, you know, true facts, ignorant of book learning, ignorant of whatever. They seem to be just mad all the time. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are, okay? A lot of them are just evil because of ignorance and they know it it also speaks of ignorance and not knowing it mm -hmm. Solomon here is saying if, if you know a righteous person watch their lifestyle a daily lifestyle and that is a well of life because it has already pr previously said that even up to death itself, they're not scared of that. Because you don't have to fear death. Why? Because you've lived a godly lifestyle. He's going to take you on to the next realm. Your last sigh out here is your first <laughs> breath with him. 
This is what this is saying. But the, the, uh, the violence that covereth the mouth of the wicked. How would you just like to live a lifestyle that everything that you do and say is completely wicked? Uh, that, that just, uh, my mind finds it hard to go there, but there are those people. Okay? Yeah, I wonder if we could make a guy named uh, Biden. Yeah. And Kaplan and yeah, that'd Big be Eyes, AOC, and uh, folks, I just want y'all to, I, I want to encourage yeah. you two this morning, myself and everybody out there in video land, just stay tuned. Not necessarily to this lesson, but we're going to keep teaching the lessons all we can. But just stay tuned. I, I talked with a, a very prominent businessman this past week uh, who's been in the Bible for years and years and years. Uh, he has uh, several companies around the area he owns, and, and I've known him for 35 or 40 years. And I asked him some very deep questions concerning what's going on in our society today. And our, our conclusion was, let's just stay tuned. We know we're going to be raptured. We, we know the church is going to be raptured, okay? But just stay tuned because what we are going through today is what we're told we're going to be going through. Right. We are right. told this. Right. We already have the knowledge, mm -hmm. the wisdom of the Word of God, but we also have the knowledge. And we are experiencing what is going on in God's Word. We're living it. Correct. Okay. So here's the thing. Just stay tuned. What you see in the news, what you hear AOC babble out, what you hear Nancy Pelosi spew from back behind her dentures or whatever she's doing, what you hear Joe Biden mumble, what you hear Nadler say, what you hear all these people say, they're there for a reason. And when the Lord Jesus Christ does what he does, it's going to be that much more glorious. Because if everything was utopia right now, we would really be desiring to go to heaven. Everything would just be fine. But the tighter that this gets, the tighter those screws get on us, the more we should be doing according to the Word of God. And then, boom, the Lord Jesus returns after the seven years, uh, great tribulation. But this is what's leading up to the Antichrist, the false prophet. Everything is leading up to what we've already heard in God's Word. So don't be amazed. Don't, every time you hear something in the news, don't go, oh my gosh, it can't get any worse. Yes, it can. It's going to. It's exciting to me mm -hmm. to be living in these days, to see this fulfilled. We, we've already been through Daniel, what he talked about, and we're, we're, we're living some of that too. And that proverb is saying, just, just hold on. Just keep holding on. Mm -hmm. Violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. 12 says, hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all things. What you just read there? You have to really be concerned about someone's soul and that if they have been in this lifestyle and you still say, you know what? God is the only one that can change your soul. God is the only one that can save you from his grace and his mercy. Should he have grace and mercy on your life, God of heaven gets all the glory for it because the world has seen how you've lived. And if he can take you, a wretched sinner, everybody knows, everybody sees your lifestyle and turn you into one of his glory to God. That's what that says. His love, His grace, His mercy. Mm -mm -mm. 13 says, In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Mm -mm -mm. Now, let me not water that down. I believe it says, What do you think that says? Because I want to say what I know it says. What do you think it says, Connie? Read, read 13 and say what it says. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod for the back of him that is void of understanding. You've got to be disciplined if you are not, I mean, if you just keep on doing stupid things because you are you have understanding, perhaps a little bit of discipline will help you go, oh yeah, I'm not doing the right thing. I need to quit that. You, you, mean, you mean to read my deep Theological oh, notes that are oh, on this. Okay. It's three words here. Everybody lean into the camera just a little bit. Here it is. <clears throat> Whip the dummies. <laughs> you got that? That's what it says. What does it say? A rod across the back? What does that mean? Cow. Bow. Huh? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Now, oh, in today's society, that would just be so violent. That would be violent on our part. Those Christians are whipping people. Well, better to be whipped by me here on this earth saying, you're doing wrong. You better straighten up. Because, folks, the Lord God has a great big whip, and you're not going to get out of that. Paul writes to the church at Corinth, judge yourself. Because if you don't, while you're walking around on earth, while you got, while you got breath there on earth, I'm going to. 
What does it say right there? What do you think, Emil? I'm thinking that. Oh, and by the way, uh, head on up behind the woodshed and bring the switch, the go. rod with you, because I'll be right there. <laughs> go, go cut your own. That's go even right, right, yeah. Yeah. And I don't want a little twig. I want a good yeah. when it cuts the air. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's saying is, you know, and a lot of times when when you when you do those kind of things, what does it say? Yeah. What does it say earlier? Spare the rods, pull the job. Yeah. Well, if we say lacking sense will be beaten with a rod, but you got to understand something too. Why are you lacking the sense? Because you're not in the Word of God. Absolutely, sure. Enough. You know, it, it's simple as that. I mean, it, it, these things are so simple. Yep. Simple-minded people like me. That, that's why they're written. That's, that's what Proverbs is. It's it, like you said. It's a bullet statement. Here's what it says. Here's here it is. There's no. Uh, there's no I'm not interpretation gonna, of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say there's no deep theological uh, aspect to this because there are, but that's not the fore, forethought of the verses. Yeah. They're just here. It is. Here is wisdom. The, read this verse. That's what it means. Okay. Uh, if you'll notice, King Solomon had a son too. His name was Rehoboam. And when he was coming up in the ranks, uh, Solomon had some wise men, actual wise men in his realm. But when Rehoboam was about to take over, instead of listening to those guys, he went, I don't, those are old. But they he were with my Solomon. His he listened to his young buddies. Well, that wasn't a good thing. Mm -mm. See that? They, they weren't wise. They weren't experienced. They were his young buddies. They were dodos. And it worked. Read, read back over to First Kings, I think it is. They're extinct now, by the way. First, First Kings chapter 12, yeah. The dodo bird. <laughs> These were dodo birds. Uh, 14 says, Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. You, you can't get away from it. The contrast, two different folks there. Wise men lay up knowledge. Why? For, for next time, for, 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 for the tomorrows of my life, I'll know what I know today. Every day, like today, I should, at the end of this day, I should know more in this word and about life and how to govern my life than I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's just, a, it might be a little bitty thing, but it should be one more proverb, one more verse, one more step closer to my faith, laying up knowledge. Where do you lay it up? At, at Jesus' feet. But the mouth of the fools is near destruction. Folks, you can't get away from that. That's exactly what that means. They are near destruction because they're further and further away from God as the wise gets closer and closer to God. The, the foolish, the unrighteous, the wicked, the evil doers get that much further away and they are near destruction. They're facing the second death. That's what it's talking about. Uh, Bill, read 15, 16, and 17, if you would. The wealth of the rich is their fort fortress. The poverty of the poor is their destruction. The earnings of the godly enhance their lives, but evil people squander their money on sin. Mm -mm -mm. Evil people yeah. squander their money on sin. It's payday. Let's it's go payday. to the bar. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just got paid. Let's go. And what do you have Monday morning? Nothing. Nothing. I actually have no, I, I worked around, not with them directly, but around people in a, in, in a realm of what my work has been in the past, um, of people who will say, uh, on Friday, it's payday, and this group of people have their their paycheck, and by Monday, they, they might have a $20 bill left. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Right. And I'm thinking, what did they do? They squandered it over the weekend. They got drunk, they partied, they did whatever else. And now then what they do, they're, they're faced with the daunting task of, I've got to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe even Saturday, just to make up what I lost. But then Friday night and that Saturday comes and I'm going to do it all over again. Yeah. That's, 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 that's lack of wisdom. That's foolishness. It's kind of like the, the story of the scorpion and the fox. <laughs> Nature. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure enough. Uh, destruction. They're destru there the word again is destruction. They're, they're near destruction. The destruction of the good. Now, a rich man's wealth is his strong city. What do you think that means? I think it, what it means is the the that it's um, the wealth of a wis the, the the wealth of a man of wisdom is going to put that wealth to good use. Mm -hmm. And it also makes their city strong. Right. Their their their, their area, their community yeah. is yeah. a strong community. Right. right. That's what that's what it means to me. Poor by choice will bring calamity. Yep. Uh, Proverbs 10, there, it, it, this is teaching us to be working, lively, earning, productive. Otherwise, a person who is lazy, slack, and <laughs> non-caring will bring upon themselves destruction. 
slow moving and in a lazy haze. You ever know anybody like that? Just oh, yeah. a lumbering, slow moving, uh, uh, and it takes them 10 minutes to turn around, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they don't get anything done. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they're, they're scratching their head going, well, I'm hungry and I'm thirsty and I'm a roof's I don't know what to do. Well, do something. Move. <laughs> <laughs> be the ant. We talked about that this morning. Yeah. Be, be well, the we ant. talked about the ants. Then one of us. Be the ant. Absolutely. They're always moving. Uh, Y'all turn to Romans eight six. Romans eight six. Let me read sixteen here. It says, "The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, and the fruit of the wicked is sin." Ooh. To be carnally minded is what death. Mm -hmm. But to be spiritually minded, oh, I'm looking there for you. 8 6. What does it say? Honey? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now let's start off way, way back over to the left over here in Genesis. Did we have a couple of brothers? One of them was righteous, and his older brother was carnally minded. Remember Cain and Abel? Mm -hmm. Well, old Abel, he was a tender of the sheep. He, he had flocks, he had little lambs, and he brought one of them to sacrifice. And, and it was a great sacrifice because something had to lose his life, shed his blood. The, the carnally minded, the worldly minded, the one that tried to do things on his own with his own hands, brought some produce out of the ground. He put it in there, dug up, and, and brought it to, you know, maybe still had dirt on the roots, so I can't threw it over on the altar uh, to the Lord and said, here. And the Lord said, I don't accept that. Remember, that was carnally minded. That was wicked. What did he do? He lashed out at his brother. Why? Because his offering was accepted. And he murdered his brother. First murder. He was a murderer. Okay? So that's carnally minded. Mm -hmm. Carnally compared to wicked. Well, what happened to Cain? He was cursed. Mm -hmm. Still is, folks. You want to go into a long story? I'll tell you a long story about that. Um, 17. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. Now, it, it, again, let me ask this question. Very deep thought here. Is there a choice going on in that verse? Mm hmm. Does it sound like there's a choice going on there? Mm -hmm. uh, to refuse something? Mm -hmm. To refuse something. That means it's offered, right? It's there. Like we've heard. The, the previous verses saying that wisdom is sitting right there on the street corner. you got your bad people over here. Wisdom is sitting at the gates. At, at this time, put yourself back in the cloppy clops of all this going on. The, the little cobblestone streets and the dirt roads and the, uh, the city gate that's open during the day and closed at night. That's the only way into the city. Wisdom says she's right there at the gate. You can't go in or leave without passing the, the, the Wisdom University. But people refuse. That's what it says. That's what that verse says. He is, um, uh, he is in the way, in verse 17, of life that keepeth instruction. That means you're in what, what, what way of life? You're going to live. You're going to live life abundantly here on this earth. God is going to bless you and shower his blessings. Mm -hmm. Tough times? Absolutely. But you're going to get, if you go to it, you're going to go through it. That's, That's what right. the Bible says. He's going to keep you through it. Every boat that was mentioned in the Gospels that was told to go from one side of the shore to the other side made it. None of them sank. Keep that in mind. So you're going to go through it because Jesus is with you. But he that just desires and uh, evil and refuses instruction, you're on your way to destruction. That's what the Bible says. Poverty. Mm -hmm. Aerith. You ignore correction. You, you can accept correction or you can ignore correction. That's what that says. 18 says, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Uh, can I turn back to Leviticus 19? And read verse 16. And Bill, uh, flip over for this next verse to over to James. Or over to your right to the book of James. Chapter 1, verse 19. Yeah. And let, me read, let me read Psalms, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 10, 18 again. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Have you ever been around somebody for a week or two, or maybe even years, and they just seem like you're a good buddy. You, you're not, maybe not like bad. You don't have dinner every, every Friday night or coffee every morning, whatever it was, but you've known them for years, and you're always, you, you seem pretty good with you, work, whatever, and they seem like a pretty good buddy, but then when it comes down to really nitty-gritty, 
They stab you in the back. Have you ever had anybody like that before? <laughs> huh? There, there are people like that. Well, what, is, what does Leviticus say? 1916? Yes. Thou shalt not go up and down as a table or a tail bearer. That makes a lot more sense. I was going, why are we talking about tables? Okay, let me go back to the beginning. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Now read 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Right. In other words, that God is watching that one that has that type of heart or that type of mentality or that type of lifestyle to know. He, doesn't God know? That says God knows that what's in your heart, he knows if you're acting out that you like this person and are kind to them, you seem to be kind to them, but really in your heart, who you are, you don't like them at all, and then you take their name and slander it. Don't do that. You're being fool, and he knows it. He's going to count you accountable for that, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to stand before that. Okay, that's what it says. Don't act like, I like this thing, and I, and I tell people about this, uh, about Connie, my, my first redhead wife here. When I'm out in public and someone, oh, uh, how long have you been? Oh, yeah, I've been, uh, you still married to Connie? Oh, yeah, sure enough, yeah, I, well, she won't leave me alone. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, here's what I say a lot about you, and I think I've told you this before. Connie has the type of demeanor that if she likes you, she likes you. But if she doesn't really care to be around you, she's not going to act like she likes you. She's not going to buddy up to you. And I like that about her. I think I have the same demeanor too. I'm not going. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to be mean. You're not going to be mean, but you're not going to just you're not going to be hypocritical. In other right. words, this is saying God knows your hypocrisy. Don't act kind to someone when in in your life, in your ways, when in your heart you're going. I wish they would just drop dead. Mm. Hmm? That's what it says. And don't take their name. Their good name. If they haven't done anything to you, don't slander their name. That's being wow. foolish. Okay. Foolish ways uh, of evil man. Uh, notice uh, how they refuse this. Now then, in 18 there, what you just read, Leviticus 19, 16, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, and those who pretend to be your friend, maybe for a long time, but actually they hate you, and finally you see them for who they really are, an enemy. So Leviticus 19, 17, the next verse there says, Don't flatter someone when you really hate them. Mm -hmm. Don't slander someone uh, and their name just because you don't feel well toward them. A slander is bringing up a false charge against somebody. Okay? That's what that is. So uh, do we know anybody like that? Mm -hmm. Do we know uh, anybody uh, on one side of the table right now that's saying stuff about a lot of people on the other side that's not true? They're trying to slander our names, but it's really the name of God that they're slandering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we that's see that. Now, uh, you got James there, Bill, let me read this. And, in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that ref, uh, refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is a choice silver, is as choice silver, and the heart of the wicked is little worth. What does James 119 say? 119 says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Mm. Words to live by right there. Mm -hmm. it, wouldn't it be nice? Isn't it nice to be around somebody sometimes that just, you like we mentioned earlier, uh, you, you just almost wait, wait for them to say something because when they say it, it's short and sweet mm -hmm. and, and, and right to the point. You know, you, you, you can almost see, you know, that's going on in the mind. And they're not haughty. They're not flattering themselves. They're not doing anything. It's just they have a, my, my dad was a, a whole lot like that. My dad didn't talk a lot. But when he did, it was something usually pretty interesting, pretty pretty good. You know, it was it was wise. He had a lot of experience, and it, sometimes he he would go half a day without saying hardly anything. He might you know run a little bit or go work on the car, or whatever. It was. But when he did talk, it was short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, you know, I had a um, this, myself when I worked at in the jobs that I worked in, I had a lot of people that I had to work with, and my philosophy was. There's a lot of people I liked, and there was a lot of people I didn't like. But the people I didn't like didn't know it. Mm -hmm. 
because I had to work with them. Yeah. You know, so. And there's a matter of professionalism. Correct. Well, if you're working next to somebody, you, there's no need to be having strife built well, up. I'm not talking yeah. about someone I work next to. It could be in another group or an, another say. area. That so you, the last thing in the world you want to do is piss them off. Right. Poke, poke the bear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't so, be burning your yeah, brains. That, that was my philosophy, and I got a lot of stuff done that way. Well, that's the, that's a better way to. But what were you doing? I wasn't you, saying it. You kept your mouth shut. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You you did your job. They did theirs. Right. That's a wise thing to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't don't stir that pot. <laughs> don't stir that <laughs> absolutely. pot. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The, the the end of twenty there. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Wow. Everything else though. How about choice silver? Wouldn't wouldn't you like to be pointed out in a crowd and go when that person talks? It's like refined choice silver. Just just oozing out of their throat. It, it's good stuff, it's just nice. I like to read my 19 here. No, we don't have time. Okay. Ah. Too much talk <laughs> leads to sin, but sensible, keep, and be sensible and keep your mouth shut. Boom, bingo. Uh, now that's pretty blunt right there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, sure enough. Words to live by, that's what Proverbs is. 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many but fools die for want of wisdom. Oh my goodness, and can we relate that to today's society? Uh, do we have a shortage of anything in the land today? Uh, are prices going crazy at the grocery stores and gas pumps? Do we have people spewing out one thing that's completely barbaric and unwise and foolish and wicked and evil and of the devil, while you have a society over here wanting now because they did have a job a few months ago and now then they don't because either anti-jab or the job is gone or whatever else. Look what that says. Can we relate this to today? Absolutely. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. And that mandate, by the, day, by the way, did not pass. Oh, I don't think it would, yeah. Which mandate? On the uh, shots? That, that the you jab? have to get a shot since the people wanting it done don't do it anyway. Yeah. Well, the thing is that mandate can't enforce a mandate unless it's voted by Congress. You can't just say, I want you and, to do this. And if your governor says, I'm never going to mm -hmm. allow that uh, to stand here, then that helps too. Well, we have to remember, folks, this is, this is still America, and we are still, and I thank God every day that I'm in Northeast Texas. Thank amen, God that we're amen, in Northeast Texas. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, I, I really do. Uh, it's a very staunch prayer. Thank God for my little neck of the woods is what amen. I say because we do still have a lot of freedoms here. So wherever you're watching that, if you're in this area, thank God for it. Right. Pray for those that are, are uh, outside, uh, north of the Red River, and realize, we have to realize that a, a little crazy, tottery old man flitting back and forth in Washington, D.C. <laughs> doesn't tell me what to do. He doesn't. He does not tell me what to do. He's a little old man that's followed, following some puppet strings. Okay, and we all know where those lead. Wicked, they're, worth, they're worthless. What he says is worthless. 22 and 23 says, the blessing of the Lord, notice that's singular, but it encompasses what, what he will bless you with. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as sport to fools to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. Wow, 22 there, can we apply that to our lives? There is no sorrow. There is no, uh, it's not tainted. What God bestows upon his own, what he has for his child who is doing his will is nothing but good and righteous and pure and life and happiness and joy and everything else. The joy of the Lord. Galatians, mm -hmm. what does joy of the Lord say? It, it's what? What's the fruit? The isn't fruits that, of it? The, isn't that the first one? Uh-huh. Love, joy, peace. Kind Love of and joy, yeah, right. And what? Gentleness and self-control. Same again. Love. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That's what he bestows upon his. And with that, there's no sorrow. Mm -hmm. There's no sorrow. If that's your daily lifestyle, there's no sorrow in it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the few verses that's positive all the way through. All the way through. Absolutely. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he hath added no sorrow with it. That, that's a good point there. There's no, there's no negative in that. There's no negative in that one. In fact, it just got better. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, it makes the rich, and he adds yeah. no sorrow. Right. I like it when it's an and instead yeah. of a but. If there's a but in it, it means uh-oh. 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 U
Doing wrong is fun for a fool, but living wisely brings pleasure to the sensible. Doing wrong. Just doing wrong. We've already read where they, they have to have their, their daily dose, their jab. They have to have their, I, I didn't, I can't sleep well because I didn't do something evil today. I didn't cause someone else to stumble. That's their mentality. Oh my goodness. Uh, Kyrie 24, 25. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. You ever heard the old song, like a tree that's planted by the water? Mm -hmm. Lord, I shall not be loved. Those, those roots, the roots that he has given you, where he has established his own, they grow up into that life, but they go down into deep, rich, watered, well-fertile soil and not easily moved. The wicked, on the other hand, it's like a tornado. When the word of the Lord comes by, you better have something to hunker down under mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that tornado is usually going to get you, right? Okay, yeah. well, that, this is what is the fear of the wicked. It shall come upon him. Notice, if you will notice, it is so important for us to realize, folks, when we stand up, when we stand up as believers, now listen to me, this is deep. And we proclaim the word of God. And, and folks in our Congress, senators and representatives stand up. And they are men and women of God that God has set there. When they stand up and say what is right and they do not back down, there is fear in the opposite one's eyes. Look at it. Watch it on the TV. There is fear. Fear in Nancy Pelosi's eyes. There is fear in AOC's eyes. There is fear and misunderstanding in Joe Biden's dark black coal eyes. There is fear in, Joe, in, uh, in Dr. Fauci's eyes because when they are caught in a lie and that lie is brought out and they are standing or sitting before a Senate hearing before the American people, that lie is brought out and there is fear and bumbling and stumbling in their eyes and their face. Yeah. Notice it. The word of the Lord endures forever, but the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the whirlwind passeth, the tornado that you're in, that good old East Texas tornado, so is the wicked no more. You're going to be caught up in your own deceit, in your own lies, in your own rebellion, in your own rejection of this word and those that are trying to say what is right and do what is right. You're going to be caught up in your own whirlwind and brought down to the grave, brought down to destruction, brought down to the lake of fire eventually. That's what is happening. You can see it in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Stay, stay, stay strong, child of God. Keep going. Thank God for those men and women in Congress who stand up and say what is right. Pray for them. You know, the thing is, with the way I understand it is, if you are wicked, eventually you're going to get wicked towards you. It's, you're going to be a, you're going to be a recipient of it. It's, it's granted to them right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those, those verses, you, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to reap what you sow. Absolutely. And more than you sow. Mm -hmm. And later than you sow. Yep. But don't careful that. what you say, because it might come back and bite you. It's going to bite them, <laughs> folks. But I, I'm telling you, this past week, uh, uh, when when the CDC people were being uh, 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 Senator Burr and Senator Cassidy, I believe it was, oh my goodness, they just grilled them, and and I love it when they sit there with the truth coming out of their mouths. That's not what I ask you. Answer my question. That's not what I ask. You. And they just start squirming. They're like the little. Yeah, third grader well, who Senator, knows they've done something bad. I've done everything I can. You're not answering my question. You're not well, answering Senator, my question. I, I will gladly supply you with that information. Absolutely, that's oh. what they say. No, you won't either because you don't See, have reporters it. Reporters might let them get away with that, mm -hmm. but, but no, the truth it in, comes down to folks. We do have, we do have righteous senators and mm -hmm. representatives. We do have some up there in Washington D.C. Thank God for them. They are under a lot of pressure right now, but they have the truth behind them. Amen. And it shall never fail. Okay? What would it be like if people actually answered the questions honestly? I mean, my God. Yeah, the first time. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine what it would be like if, if they asked you a question? Oh, yeah, uh, we, we messed up. Well, there were really 4,000 Americans left in Afghanistan instead of the 100 mm -hmm. we told you. Yeah. Well, uh, and just answered the first time right out boldly, yeah. Sure enough, that would make news right there. Amen. But here's the one that I watched this that was very interesting to me. Uh, just just for a little bit of truth. 
the, the direct question Senator Burr asked, how many in the CDC are not vaccinated, have not gotten a shot, but are still working? When an answer, how many, again, how many? Well, I don't have those numbers for me. Well, I do. <laughs> and if, you're ex if you're expecting other people to disclose what is actually private medical mm -hmm. information, then you should be able to do it yourself. These are the people that that are wanting. They're not. They're not wanting you healthy folks. Because they're this not is, wanting, this is a violation. Here. So well, many violations. But here's the answer. Northwards. This is the quote. Northwards of seventy-five percent of the CDC personnel not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. How much? But they, northwards of seventy-five percent more. I was thinking. Yeah. Hmm? Thought, thought that was. And still working. Mm -hmm. So people out there that have businesses that you have 101 or more employees, quit, quit firing them, quit letting them go. Don't think that I have to let uh, two or three of you go. No, you don't either. Just do your daily work. Show up tomorrow Until and they do your show work. up at your door saying you've got to let them go, then keep them. If someone shows up at your door, shoot them. Right. they don't leave your property. <laughs> sure. But what I'm saying is, don't just be looking for a reason to fire someone who's doing their job. Absolutely. Oh, now here's a nitty gritty one. Literally, verse 26 says, as, um, uh, as vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. <laughs> I've worked around people like this before. They they just are non motivatable. Is that lazy people irritate their employers. Lazy people. <laughs> that's what it says. I, I told so and so to go do something thirty minutes ago, and I don't think they've moved since then. Yeah. That that's what that says. Sluggard. A, a little folding of the hands, a little shutting of the eyelids, whatever else. Let me just take a little nap here, and not get anything done. The Bible says that's not right. You're you're going to be wanting, and you're going to be. Uh, lack of something. Uh, many the many. Remember the meeny meeny tickle you farson. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have been found wanting. Why? You had a lack of the word of God. Okay, uh, twenty seven says the fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So, folks, there again, this is going on in our lives today. We see this. There is a righteousness about some people that God has that he's pulled out, and they are in authority right now. We still have a little bit of, of that going on. Mm -hmm. And we see that is going to last and last and last. But these wicked are going to be cut off. The Bible says that. The Bible says the wicked. So what is our position? What is our mentality about that? Just hold on. Just hold on. Let's see how this pans out. We know how it's going to end. Let's just see how the next day goes. Okay? There's ups and downs in a battle. Ups and downs. We've already won the war, but there's ups and downs in the battle. See, mm -hmm. this is the exciting part to me. The hope, uh, Bill read 28 29. The hopes of the godly result in happiness, but the exceptions of the wicked come to nothing. Excuse me, expectations of the wicked come to nothing. Mm -hmm. The way of the Lord is stronghold to those with integrity but it destroys the wicked. So look at the expectations of both of the groups there. The righteous expect God to bless them because they're doing righteous, they're following him, and he does. That's what he just said. But even the expectations of the wicked end up vanity. Did, did you see that? Did you read that? Everything that they hope for, everything they dream for, everything that they steal, kill, destroy, whatever else, ends up in their own destruction. That's what that says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That even their expectations end up in the grave, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, separate from God. That's what that says. We have to keep we have to keep that in mind, folks. If you're doing right, if you're a child of God, just hold on. What comes in the morning? Joy. Joy, Joy comes in the morning. Absolutely. But weeping only lasts for the night. Mm -hmm. And what we should be weeping for is the is the lack of Christians. Weeping mm -hmm. for our nation. That's what that's what I should be crying for. I've mentioned it before. How many times do you stop at them little green signs out on the side of your 
uh, your city or your 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 uh, uh, little communities area that says the name of it and the population and maybe when it was established and drop down on your knees and open the word of God up. Lord, save so and so. Save that. Have mercy on our community. Uh, be a be a light. Help us to be the light in the community that we are here in. Uh, you know, thank God for it. The lack of that that should be what I'm weeping for. Not oh look at our Congress and we don't know what to do. Oh look at our, uh, but we don't all that. We know what to do. The Lord, yeah. It's in the Lord's hands. Last Tuesday was proof of what to do. It, it's in the Lord's hands. Romans 13 tells us about that. We've already read it here in Proverbs. Uh, Daniel tells us that. The Lord sets up people who, uh, where he wants them and when, and he brings them back down. It's no big thing. I mean, he don't even, he don't have, even his little pinky don't get, get all bent out of shape. You mean an evil king? I don't, who put that evil king? No, he knows all that. He knows all that. He put him there for a reason. Joe Biden is in the White House right now for a reason, folks. Believe it or not, there's a reason. There's a godly reason. Yep. Yes. Some of you are scratching your head out there wondering what in the world's going on. Well, read your word of God. It'll explain it. Well, it's like, it's so blatant. We get what we deserve. It's so blatant. It's like, okay, this is so, even, even people who are really dumb ought to be catching on. <laughs> because the wise know. Yeah. But if you're... If you're really dumb and you just continue to be dumb, okay, then that actually develops into stupidity. Yep. You choose to be uh, wrong. We just read about that in the previous one. He, uh, she that, that is ignorant without her even knowing it. Oh, you mentioned just then, uh, Tuesday, about the elections. Yeah, buddy. Folks, just hold on. The, the tide may be turning here yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Sure. And, and they were just talking about Virginia, Virginia and, and New okay. Jersey. New Jersey. But they would... On the, I was reading the other night on the news saying it was that. in Ohio, uh, several other states, mm -hmm. in, in smaller, you know, like city councils mm -hmm. and school right. boards mm -hmm. and things like that. It's I like the old boy up there in New Jersey that just did it on one of these things here. Spent mm -hmm. $150 on a, on a built a little. Was he the truck driver? Yeah, the truck driver. Truck driver. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm tired of what's going on and I want to change it. I don't, and somebody asked him on the news, what are you going to do? What are your plans? I don't know. But I'm going to, it's going to be different what's going on. Mm -hmm. You want to go back to work? I'm going to try to get us back to work. You want to do this? You want to go to church? We're going to go to church. You want your kids we in school that don't work? Yeah, that was a council member, right? Uh, or, or was it? No. No. no, no state was, state representative. Yeah, yeah he, beat, he, beat, he beat the guy. The, uh, the incumbent. Yeah. Because the incumbent has been doing everything evil. that's wrong. Everything that's wrong. Unrighteous and evil. Won't last long. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I hold a high regard for truck drivers anyway because they're willing to put themselves in situations that I personally, well, I, I, no one wants me driving an 18 wheeler because someone will get you squished. You can't see over the steering wheel. But, yeah, but <laughs> they, they go out, they work, and then, you know, there are so many people who refuse to do that. Yeah. But they, if, they are willing to go without sleep. If, if you eat, drink, Lay on something or live in something, all that was brought to you by a truck driver. Yeah. Somewhere at some point it was brought to you by a truck driver. If you got it, it a truck brought a truck brought it. A truck brought it. Yes. Absolutely. Sure enough. And they should be on the road and, and being taken care of. Absolutely. But now they're all being fired because they're not taking the shots. They don't need to be fired. Not, not here in They don't need to be fired. What I'm saying is I know that. I know not what you're in Louisiana. Saying. They, they just they just that the, there's a scare oh, tactic that these that a few of the the big mouths that we're reading about here have as far as the media, okay? Who is the biggest mouth of the media? Satan himself. Yeah, and okay? it doesn't make any sense to do that. I mean, they 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 hardly ever come in contact with people. I mean, they're going from here to there, mm -hmm. but they probably already developed a very strong natural immunity. Mm -hmm. I know they don't want us to even think about natural immunity. They want to get rid of that. Why? Because it's God and steel. So you get an injection that reduces your immunity. That was immunity. another thing the, senator, the senators were talking about natural immunity compared mm -hmm. to getting the shot or whatever else that could make you sick. You know very well, Connie's uh, a nephew just about died well. a couple of weeks ago, uh, passed out in the room, had, had a shot, boom. Mm -hmm. And to be taken to the emergency room. Va vaccines now. Oh. The polio vaccine was actually worth. Was made taking. to take it. Was made to take it. He didn't volunteer. But, but um, what we have now is something that is actually geared to reduce your immunity. 
Well, I don't want uh, human embryos injected into me. Thank you very much. And I don't know if it's got that in there, but if it isn't in there, it's something that they tested on. Mm -hmm. Notice this, though. The years, uh, at the end of 27, the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Uh, opposite of that song that came out a few years ago, only the good die young. The Bible says only the bad die young. The, the, uh, it says just the opposite. The righteous shall be lengthened. Okay? Uh, 28 says, The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. That's the third or fourth time in this chapter alone we've read the word destruction, folks. There is a destruction that is upon them already. There's a destruction coming soon in this life, and then the ultimate destruction being cast from the presence of the Lord into eternal lake of fire. That is the ultimate destruction. All of them, all three of them are mentioned in this chapter here. Notice that. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. But verse 30 says, The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Now, if you want to say, but wait a minute. And some people, I've been talking to some people about this. Wait a minute. Aren't we supposed to be raptured one of these days? Aren't the righteous supposed to be taken out of the earth? Yes, we are. But forever? No. How long? For seven years. And then what happens? That glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ and then our eternal inhabitation on this glorified new heavens and new earth. That's what this says. Shall we be... But Because why? There's a day of wrath coming and we're not fitted for that day of wrath. We're not set up and designed for that day of wrath. We're going to be taken out and protected and married to the, our, our Lord Jesus Christ as he is the Lamb of God and we're his bride, the bride of Christ in heaven. So notice that though the righteous shall never be removed. In other words, our, our names, our legacy, the, the legacy that God has set up through his people, his name, his church in Jerusalem especially, but throughout the universe when uh, when he returns with us, shall never be removed. But notice what it says. The wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Where are they going to be? The lake of fire. The mouth of the uh, just. Now, if y'all differ on that from me as far as that set up, let me know. I, I, I've been talking to a man about that, of a different belief system, and he has some very good points. But this is what I get out of the Bible, out of here and in uh, First and Second Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians 15. That's what I get out of it. I may be ignorant on that, I don't know. It just seems like that's what that says to me. 31 says, The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut off. The lips of the righteous shall uh, righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Complete different there but between these two here. What does your say, Bill? Which one, 32? The 32, yeah. The lips of the godly speak helpful words, but the mouth of the wicked speaks perverse words. So it's good advice for, for people who desire, uh, the Lord has instilled into them, hey, you're mine, I pulled you out, this is what you should desire, is to be wise and righteous. It's just good daily advice. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what happens? Destruction. We read about it three times here. Destruction, destruction, wicked, iniquity, evil, destruction. Folks, there's a day coming and you're not going to get out of it. These evil leaders right now that are all they want is power and dominion. It's diminishing, folks. Look how they've changed in the last uh, six months to a year. Uh, look at an old clip of any of these leaders that are up there right now that are really prominent. Look at them six months ago to what they said this past week. Mm -hmm. They're older. They're humped over. Their eyes are gaunt. They, they're not making sense. What they say doesn't make sense. They've just said it. They, they speak rambling and babblings, and they are leading to their own destruction. That's what it says. But the righteous shall do what? Last forever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. We win, folks. The righteous win. So thank you, God, for pulling us out. Anyway, any questions about that? Okay, good. Well, fellow believers, that was uh, Proverbs chapter 10. And you can see that... Uh, we had a lot of different uh, opinions about what was meant and said in those things and those verses and, and we sometimes got off on a little rant but I think it was very important for us to do that. That way there you can see what we feel here and we are sure that a lot of the people that watch this feel the same as we do. Uh, if you follow the Word of God as we hope you that you do, 
then you can see what's going on around you. But it doesn't make any difference in our hearts in regards to what we see. We still get upset about it, but we know that the Lord is going to do the right thing. We're going to do the right thing. So anyway, uh, I'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye.